Hello and welcome to Makings of a Monster, a series in which I will take you along a journey around the world and show you some of the strangest and most interesting creatures the guild hunts every day, and to give you an insight into their lifestyles, behavior, and evolution. The subject of today's episode will be the beautiful and eccentric arboreal hunter, Toby Kadachi. Toby Kadachi is a large quadruped animal, known to be found mostly in forest and jungle climates. It is an arboreal carnivore whose size averages around 13 meters from head to tail, making it fairly small compared to its large monster counterparts. Though nowhere near the top of the food chain, she is not to be underestimated. The Toby Kadachi belongs to the infraorder of fanged wyverns, a class of organisms which are typically defined by their appearance to both fanged beasts, such as Arzoros, Lagombi, and Rajang and flying wyverns, such as Diabolos, Berioth, and Paolumu. This class, which includes the likes of Odegaron, Jagras, and the mighty Zenogre, are typically quite fast and agile, with some exceptions. However, it is very clear that the Tobikidachi is no such exception. At first glance, the Tobikidachi bears a striking similarity to reptiles, with her blue-gray scales contrasting those bright red slitted eyes. However, it bears qualities of many different classes to live its arboreal lifestyle. These beasts boast large tufts of fur, akin to mammals, and small, very mobile limbs, between each of which the animal has evolved a large, elastic portion of its skin, known as the gliding membrane, joining each of its forelimbs to its hind legs. This adaptation has given it the ability to glide for short durations. Current estimations believe this adaptation was developed to support its arboreal lifestyle, similar to the flying squirrel. However, the ability to maintain itself in the air may be used to give Toby Kidachi an edge when matched against foes much larger than herself. Living in large forest areas, these creatures have adapted well to the arboreal lifestyle. Their legs tipped with claws perfect for climbing the large vegetation and the aforementioned gliding ability allowing such a creature to effortlessly live among the trees despite her size. The head of the beast hides quite a few interesting adaptations in itself. At the very snout of the creature lies a beak or fang-like structure. However, this structure is formed from three specialized scales, which have grown and hardened to a form of pseudo-teeth, which she uses to latch onto her prey. Inside her mouth is an extremely elastic membrane that helps her open her jaw wide. A particularly dexterous animal may still be able to escape her, were it not for the small rows of teeth along the top and bottom of the jaw, which grabs onto the height of her prey and does not let go, creating one of the strongest holds among creatures of her size. The specially adapted slit eyes are akin to a viper, and she uses them in a very similar way. Vipers are predators who rely heavily on depth perception to attack. When striking, it is crucial that they know exactly how far they must lunge so as not to damage their fangs during the strike. Likewise, while hunting, Toby Kadachi is nearly completely reliant on her depth perception. However, unlike the viper, she risks her entire body when jumping from tree to prey meaning timing and distance is crucial information she cannot afford to mistake. The Toby Kadachi's claws are well suited for an arboreal lifestyle. Unlike many other fanged wyverns, she has developed her claws not for combat, but for climbing. At the end of her four dexterous legs boasts three long claws which never stop growing, meaning the beast must constantly grind them against trees to wear them down. An observant hunter can see the traces of such activity, as there are many claw marks and fur left behind on the areas where it rubs. This is thought to serve the dual purpose of marking its territory for others of its kind. It should be noted that Toby Kadachi will rarely attack with its claws and will in fact avoid this if at all possible, as damage to the claws could severely hinder their ability to live in the canopies of the forest. Instead of relying on her claws, she uses her wide, heavy tail for the majority of her attacks. She will often glide over her prey and slam into them dealing quite heavy damage. This is why it is believed she boasts such a large tail for her body size. The tail also is quite wide, to further assist gliding by increasing her surface area, and contains many extremely elastic muscles, allowing her to slam her entire body weight onto her tail, with minimal risk to herself. While the Toby Kadachi appears very well suited for hunting from the canopies of the forest, she still hides one more trick up her sleeve. The long filaments of hair along her back are not there for show, nor for warmth, Instead, she's evolved a rather creative use for these hairs. By brushing up against the nearby foliage and grass, she is able to store vast amounts of static electricity into her fur, which, while she cannot directly control it, 
she is able to unleash in combination with her attacks. While this doesn't grant her any new techniques, it makes all of her regular attacks do considerably more damage, as well as potentially stunning and paralyzing her target. It was once believed that this was another adaptation evolved to hunt prey, however, many are now believing a new theory. The Toby Kodachi's electric affinity seems like an unnecessary adaptation for a predator whose primary prey are the herbivores of the forest. While it certainly helps in stunning the prey and preventing the Toby Kodachi from being injured from any retaliation, it is believed that the static electricity, along with its expert maneuverability in the air, has evolved to give it a fighting chance against some of the other predators of the forest, many of whom would otherwise pounce at the opportunity for a meal such as her. One factor all electric-wielding animals must account for is the protection of their own bodies, and Tobikodachi is no exception. Electricity is one of the most dangerous elements for an animal to wield, as it poses a considerable risk to its user. Unlike poison and fire, the material to create her electricity cannot be stored within the body. If she were to do that, she would stop her own heart and die. Instead, she stores all the charge in the long hairs on her back. She has developed a thick coat of insulating fur just below the conducting hairs in order to shield her body from her own charge. This, in turn, means that when she strikes a creature with her tail, the only place for all of that built-up static to go is into the creature, creating a completely natural flow of damage with almost no energy required from her. The behavior of these animals is that of a recluse. They prefer to roam the forests hidden from sight, and are often docile to hunters until provoked. While there have been reports of unprovoked attacks from some hunters, further investigation has shown that these reports were due to the hunters being already engaged in combat with another, larger beast, causing the Toby Kodachi to most likely confuse the situation for an attack at her, an understandable mistake, given the treacherousness of this world. As it stands, however, these creatures are often quite indifferent to the presence of people, as they deem us no threat until proven otherwise, making their study fairly simple when compared to the other denizens of the forest. Among the creatures of the forest, she shares her habitat with the likes of Great Jagras, and the much more formidable Anjanath and Rathalos, all of whom can make life in the wilderness quite challenging for most animals. The presence of these larger threats is most likely what caused her to develop such a hidden lifestyle, so as not to draw attention to herself, allowing her to hunt in relative peace. This would also explain her seeming indifference to hunters, as we appear much smaller in comparison and simply do not seem to pose a threat. The Toby Kodachi is a truly marvelous beast. She boasts a beautiful physique, highly adapted to the trees, and truly exceptional skills in being one of the few creatures to wield electricity in such a remarkable way. She has made a claim in the ecosystem for herself, and is not one to back down when that spot is challenged. Toby Kodachi is a spark of resistance in a truly large world. Thank you all for watching the first episode of Makings of a Monster. I am incredibly proud to begin this series, as I believe as hunters we often overlook the ecology of these animals and how they could have come to be. This series will hope to go over some, if not all, of your favorite monsters. So if there are any you'd like to see next, please put them in the comments below. Also be sure to like and subscribe, as this is going to be a long-running series, and I would love for you to come along for the ride.